Hi, you guys. Welcome. Welcome. Добро пожаловать. My name is Salmansa Rogers, and this is True Crime Stories with Sal. Whew, you guys, get ready for another story, and today is equally as heartbreaking and disturbing, to say the least. This story was actually named the most grisliest and gruesome story of West Hollywood history. Before we dive into that story, I want to just do a quick content warning and disclaimer that I will be talking about torture, murder, and abuse today. The people in the story are real. It's a 100% true story. I just changed the names of the people in it due to respect for the loved ones and the victims, of course. And with that being said, uh, get comfy, get cozy, have your beverage in hand. Get ready for today's story, episode three. It's 2016 Los Angeles in West Hollywood. 30-year-old Anna is living her seemingly dream life. She is from Ukraine. She had this big dreams of coming to Los Angeles and work as a model. And so far, her dreams have been coming true. Not only is she a beautiful model uh, with a great body, great personality, she's also very smart. She's actually graduated uh, law school back in Ukraine, and she also worked as a translator here in Los Angeles. Anna met her dream guy, or so she thought. I will call him Peter. Peter comes from a rich family. He literally, how we would say it in Sweden, been fed with a silver spoon ever since birth. Uh, money is no problem for him, and he is living his life to the fullest, spending money right and left without any remorse or regret. Anna was really living her dream life. She just moved to LA, a city she always wanted to live in. She was working as a model. She had this amazing rich boyfriend that spoiled her rotten. What else could she want? Shortly after, Anna and Peter moved in together in this West Hollywood apartment complex and Anna became pregnant. This was seriously the best news that Anna could ever have received. This was cherry on top. Not only is her career blossoming, her love life is blossoming, and now she's expecting a baby. She's over the moon happy, and Peter seems to join her on her happiness. In the middle of Anna's pregnancy, Anna's mother actually moved from Ukraine to Los Angeles to be close to her daughter and eventually her granddaughter. On May 3rd, 2016, Anna welcomed a little baby girl into the world. That's when Peter started showing a whole new side of him that Anna never knew that he had or ever seen before. Peter started getting more aggressive and demanding attention from Anna. It's like this grown man is jealous of a newborn baby and tried to compete for attention. He even started threatening Anna that he would go and cheat on her if she would not give him the attention that he needed. And cheated he did. A few days later, Anna come to find out that Peter was involved with another woman and this woman has filed a rape charge against Peter. As you guys can imagine, this whole situation and this news broke Anna's heart. She was disgusted, she was humiliated, she was heartbroken, and, but she was strong and she decided to leave him. So she packed her bags, took her baby, and moved in with her mother. Two weeks after the separation between Anna and Peter, Anna is out on town with her mother and they're shopping, grabbing lunch together while she receives this text message from Peter. He wants to talk to her eventually, you know, be on good terms for the baby and maybe even get back together. He's very sorry. He loves them both and he wants them back in their life. And I'm pretty sure you guys can guess by now that this type of meetup that Peter is planning for him and Anna 
is not the typical kiss and makeup type of meetup. It's way more sinister than that. Anna agrees to meet up with Peter at their old apartment. She tells her mother that, don't worry, I'm just going to meet up with him, talk everything through, and I will be back soon. And that will be, unfortunately, the last time Anna's mother would see Anna alive. The next day, when Anna failed to show back home at her mother's house, her mother got extremely worried. She started calling and texting her phone with no answers back. She went to the apartment complex, but the doors were locked, and she began screaming Anna's name from the street. And she could see the curtains moving in the apartment, but no Anna or no Peter are coming out or opening the door. So she goes and files her daughter missing. Police agrees to do a welfare check, and they arrive at the West Hollywood apartment that Anna and Peter shared together. When the police arrived to the apartment, they knocked on the door, they didn't get an answer, so they knocked again and again and again. They had no choice but to break in the door, and they quickly noticed that Peter had barricaded the door with furniture. Peter also locked himself in in the bedroom and was not budging. He was not about to open the door and he was not at all compliant with the police. When police entered the bedroom, they could not fathom of what they were looking at. The bedroom was covered in blood. Upon entering further into the bedroom, the police quickly spotted Anna's mutilated, lifeless body laying on top of the bed. She was unrecognizable, covered in her own blood, and it seemed like she was missing her scalp. This is a part of the coroner's office transcript. The entire scalp was dramatically absent and was not found, was not present with the body. Her skull has been stripped down to the surface of the bone. There was no scalp present except for little bits in the back of the neck portion of the right side of her face were torn away, including the right ear and part of the posterior face on the right side, all the way down to the jawline. There was quite a number of bruises and abrasions on the face, primarily on the left side, the left cheek and the left jaw area. A number of bruises and abrasions, including one which turned out to be a human bite mark, she had lived for at least eight hours approximately after receiving the scalp injuries and the bruises of the collarbone. I have never seen this before, and I doubt if hardly any forensic pathologist in the country, in this country or abroad, have ever even seen this outside of perhaps wartime. So it's extremely rare. In other words, Peter had skinned Anna's entire face and head, and poor Anna was alive through all of it. Her cause of death was ruled as severe head trauma and severe loss of blood. Upon another gruesome discovery, they found a graphic novel written by Peter describing a crime that was similar extremely detailed and similar to the same crime that he just committed on his girlfriend, Anna. Peter, of course, wanted to take the easy way out and pled insanity, but the judge could see right through him. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Anna's daughter is now living with her grandmother, so Anna's mother, I couldn't find out if they're still living in Los Angeles or if they moved back to Ukraine, but I'm happy that her daughter is safe 
and in good hands with loving people. And that, my friends, is the tragic story of a beautiful young girl named Anna. What can we learn from today's story? One thing that I would say is money can definitely not buy you happiness. My heart truly goes out to Anna's family and her daughter. I wish nothing but the best for that little girl. God bless her mother for being so strong and for being able to take care of Anna's daughter. Yeah, this is again another super sad and tragic case uh, that could have, could have, would have, could have, would have, should have been prevented. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's story. If you have any future story suggestions for me, please leave comments below. Uh, please be respectful in the comments. Like I said, even though the names are changed, you never know who's reading the comments. It could be the victim's loved ones and family, so keep it respectful. If you'd like to follow me on my other social media platforms, such as Instagram and TikTok, you can click the link below. As always, stay safe, stay blessed. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. Hope to see you guys next Friday. Ciao, cacao.